This is In the Spotlight. It's about people on this planet that has captured the attention of vloggers like me. Listen and learn more about your concerns on In the Spotlight. I met him playing two-hand touch football, <laughs> you know. Now they're 20-year-old juniors in college. Well, he's the quarterback. I was the slot receiver. After Tuesday's election, they're believed to be the youngest black Republicans ever to win political office in deep blue Connecticut. Ed Ford won a seat on the Middletown School Board, the same district where he attended public schools. And when the results came in, um, I was just absolutely euphoric. Tyrell Brown was elected to the Middletown Planning and Zoning Commission, where he too grew up. When the results did come in it, and I found that I won, I said, okay, I said, here we go, time to get to work. What brought you here? How'd you, how'd you get involved to say, yeah, I'm going to go to the convention? Uh, I was fortunate, fortunate enough to uh, get nominated and then appointed by my school. I go to Connecticut College, a small liberal arts school uh, out east, and uh, they sent uh, myself to the Republican National Convention and then a fellow student to the Democrat National Convention. And so I'm really fortunate for this exciting opportunity. How did you get to become the youngest delegate here? So I, I am an at-large alternate delegate representing the state of Illinois. Uh, started out last fall meeting all of the presidential candidates during the campaign season, both Democrat and Republican, as an educational experience. He still got braces. I didn't think he would actually run. It's worth a try. Time for a change. What's all the buzz about? Brandon Pollan. <laughs> I am absolutely nervous. I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Who at 19 years old is the youngest person ever elected as mayor in the state of Maryland. And starting tonight, he'll be leading a town of about 4,000 people in Indian Head. I just decided to step up because I, I think I can implement some solutions to Indian Head's problem. They must have the courage and the guts to take a stand and not equivocate. Yeah, they're we prove the political experts We wrong. are an ambitious and determined people. The time for diplomacy is, is the now. first woman speaker of the House for President of the United States. My name is Ilhan Omar, and I'm the first Somali-American Muslim legislature in the country. We did it. Omar was elected last year in her home state to the Minnesota House of Representatives. Did you feel like you had more to prove because you were a woman? It wasn't just the the woman barrier, right? I also had the cultural barrier of, of, of being a Muslim. Omar is the first female Muslim refugee legislator elected in the country. My faith, Islam, truly means peace. But I think because people don't take the time to understand what this faith is about, they make judgments that are harmful. Born in Somalia in 1982, when she was eight, Omar's family fled due to the civil war. She spent four years in a refugee camp in Mombasa, Kenya. In 1995, her family immigrated to the U.S. When you think back to your time at the refugee camp and you're watching what's going on right now, what goes through your mind? There was a picture of a little boy who washed up in a shore a while back. And I remember people were sharing this picture in social media. I didn't want to look at this picture because that for me is, is a real reality. Like I was one of those kids. I think he'd be so At 14, nice. Omar fell in love with politics when she was her grandfather's interpreter at local political meetings in Minneapolis. Watching his excitement over this process that for me instilled a great sense of wanting to participate in this process. Omar was inspired by Representative Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American woman elected to Congress. Shirley Chisholm's mannerisms in sort of saying if you are a person who feels like you should have a voice at that table, if they don't have a chair for you, you bring a lawn chair, um, sort of spoke to my heart. Why are women not running for public office in large numbers the way that men are? There is certain scrutiny that is placed on female leaders that is not placed on um, male leaders. So if you're a mother, people ask, how are you going to find the balance? If you are a father, nobody asks that question. And the other thing is that we think we need to have more education. We need to have more experience. We had one of the most qualified uh, candidates in our nation's history running for office. And because she was a female, everybody wanted to 
you know, tear her down in some way. The 34-year-old is a mother of three. You have young girls. What do you hope you do um, as far as changing the conversation about what they can become? My daughter, you know, since she was five, has kind of talked about the, her desire to someday be president. And she sees that there is a path that someone like her mother is able to hold public office. Omar also recognizes the responsibility of being a first female in politics because when you are the first, it's really important um, that you are not just climbing the ladder yourself, but that you are leaving the ladder for everyone else to climb after you. Issues of the forum. And she hopes her public service and her life inspire others. I think people can say Ilhan, who had a life in a refugee camp as a young kid, who came here only speaking two words of English, who ran for office in a time where there was extreme hateful rhetoric, if she was able to do it, then I can do that. If you want to learn how to write a perfect resume, develop effective interviewing skills, and become a time management specialist, look into taking my online course, Skills to Pay the Bills. It's available right now at GetReadyProductions.com.